uh, can I just test if I can share my screen for the slides or something? Yes, ma'am, one second. Craig, you can start now. I can? Excellent. Yes. Okay. Uh, ma'am. Um, okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, namaste and uh, salaam alaikum. I hope you guys are doing wonderful today. Uh, thank you for joining us on our pep talk. And uh, this is a wonderful pep talk that we have. It's very informative. We do this from time to time. Today's pep talk is about cervical cancer, early signs, symptoms, and treatments. And it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Bandana Sodhi, MD, DND. Dr. Bandana Sodhi has an illustrious experience of more than 20 years and has worked at one of the most, um, most prestigious medical institutions in India, like the Research and Referral Army Hospital at New Delhi, and has served patients coming from every strata of society, truly in a living example of in service to humankind. Dr. Sodhi has received many awards and accolades for her significant contributions to medical literature. Uh, she also has to her credit many scholarly articles published at various internationally acclaimed medical journals and is also invited as a, as a faculty for several national and international conferences. So she is an active member of many esteemed medical organizations and keeps herself abreast with all the latest advances in her field. So I hand over the conversation to Dr. Sodhi. It's been an absolute pleasure to meet you, ma'am, and uh, take it away. Thank you so much for the lovely introduction and for inviting me over for this uh, crucial topic that we should all be aware about, right? And uh, can I start my talk or we need to- Absolutely, um, Krishna. Yes, ma'am, we can start now. Okay, is it possible to share my screen? I have a few slides so that it- You can do that, ma'am, from your end. You have right. a button called share screen at the bottom. From there, you yes. can do that. Let me just see, one sec. Mm. No, it's not coming here. One second. Uh, I need to have a full screen one. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. All right. Fine. Now, uh, hello, everybody. I am here to talk about cancer of the cervix today and why we need to know about this important topic and what all we need to know about this topic will be covered in my conversation. Questions, I would love to answer all your questions at the end of the little talk that I'm going to give you. Now, cancer of the cervix. What, why do we need to know about cancer of the cervix? Cancer of the cervix is a cancer which happens in the lower part of the uterus. Why we need to know? Because it is preventable. It requires an urgent attention. And we should know that at least 160 million women are at risk in our country to develop this cancer between the ages of 35 to 50. And if not treated, it has a high fatality, apart from the high morbidity. That means it can cause a lot of illness also. That is why we need to know about this cancer. And as all of us are aware, this January is a cancer cervix awareness month. And one more thing that 4th of February is the World Cancer Day. So all of us should be aware of how to detect the cancer, how to screen it, and treat it at the earliest so that all of us are protected from it. Now, 
what is cervical cancer first and foremost cervical cancer is the third most common cancer amongst women and what is cervix as hum sab ke liye we all need to know what is the cervix cervix is the mouth of the uterus the uterus is the womb and this cervix when it is closed it keeps the baby inside and holds the pregnancy for 9 months till the time the baby delivers so that part of the uterus is called the cervix and cancer of the cervix is very common in women and as i have said it is the third most common cancer in women now whenever cancer of the cervix develops some symptoms develop usme kuch symptoms aa jate hain because of which the lady should go to her gynecologist at the earliest right the first symptom that happens can be abnormal bleeding from the vagina that means abnormal bleeding means it can happen in between periods or it can happen after periods are over that means once menopause sets in that means once the lady attains menopause that means jab uske periods band ho jate hain that is the time usko agar bleeding hoti hai to that bleeding needs to be addressed us time gynecologist ko milna zaruri hai second symptom jo ho sakta hai that is foul smelling vaginal discharge that means jo discharge aata hai that can have a foul smell usme gandi smell aa sakti hai pain lower abdomen niche abdomen mein pain ho sakta hai which is not like a normal pain Uh, like a gastric pain or other pain, any abnormal discomfort, जो नीचे lower abdomen में है, that is what is to be addressed. If the disease is advanced and not caught in time, then there can be weight loss and there can be fatigue. Bleeding which happens even after intercourse definitely needs to be addressed. So, if after coitus bleeding is there, please go and see a gynecologist. That means. once you have any of these symptoms then a gynecologist definitely needs to be seen what are the common causes commonest reason for cervical cancer is human papilloma virus infection hpv infection jisko hum bolte hain it is a sexually transmitted infection and this can be prevented as i will talk in ahead in my slides this can be prevented this is the commonest reason which causes cervical cancer and the the risk factors that means there is a certain at risk population where it is common the risk population would be those who are already on medicines which reduce the immunity that population that means if you are on steroids or if you have an illness like an hiv or wherever your immunity is affected so these things they can make you prone to develop hpv second is smoking also increases the risk factor for developing cervical cancers third of course is when there are multiple sexual partners again this problem tends to come up so if we treat the underlying cause that means prevent the hpv infection we are likely to prevent cancer of the cervix now the most important thing that we need to talk about screening of cancer of the cervix screening means early detection early detection means that you must undergo certain tests which should be done at some regular intervals to pick up the disease at the earliest if any disease is picked up at the earliest then it can be treated at the earliest and the spread can be prevented that means early detection early treatment prevent bad aspects of the disease and prevent the disease from spreading and cancer if detected early can definitely be prevented from spreading Sorry. and definitely Uh, any question in between and definitely then we can treat it at the earliest and give longevity to the patient so screening of cervical cancer is something very very important the most important way to screen 
is by something called outpatient department. That means you get any anesthesia. It is a simple test where a slide is made or a liquid-based cytology is given so that the cells can be uh, put on to that and checked. These cells are taken from the cervix. That means the lower part of the uterus, which is visible through the vagina. So once these cells are taken and they are checked, they can detect the early uh, cells of cancer very, very quickly. So this is the easiest way to screen for cervical cancer. Now, when should pap smear be done? Pap smear should be done right from the age of 21, can be done to the age of 65. If only three years. PV test can also be done. So there is no other special test to be done for it. So if we do a pap smear plus HPV screening, once in five years is recommended till the age of 65. So this uh, detection can detect pap smear and HPV both. Why we are concentrating on HPV? Because as I have already said, HPV is the commonest cause of cervical cancer. So if we have a method to detect both, we can treat early lesions, precancerous lesions, and prevent cancer from developing. Hum sabko ye samajna hai that cancer prevention, if it can be done, is so important to reduce any kind of mortality and morbidity. That means illness. Hum sabko ye baat samajna zaruri hai. So for every lady, I would suggest, please go to your nearest gynecologist and get a pap smear screening done. This is a very, very, very simple test and it will help in, in you know, screening and preventing such long-term problems. So I hope the message is clear that screening is very important to detect early cervical cancer changes. The next, as I've mentioned, is HPV testing. Wherever we have a behavior where we feel that HPV may be positive, where H HPV testing can give us some hint that it is existing, we can do only HPV testing also. Wherever there is recurrent vaginal discharge, foul-smelling vaginal discharge, we must do an HPV testing. If HPV strains, human papilloma virus strains are positive, then further tests can be done to detect any early changes of the cervical cancer and they can be treated by methods like cryocauterization, which is cold cautery, or by smaller procedures like cone biopsies, where a major surgery would be averted. So the importance of testing has been told to you. For all the ladies listening today, we must understand that Testing and screening is for our lives to improve the quality of our lives. Now, coming to the second aspect. That means screening is one aspect. Second aspect is vaccination. Now, prevention. Uh, Pastor Lewis has put in clearly, why talk of cure when you can prevent it? That is for every disease that if we can prevent something, why should we talk of a cure? If we talk of a cure means that we have not prevented it. So prevention of HPV is something very, very important. And how it can be prevented? It can be prevented by an HPV prevention vaccine, which is also known as a cervical cancer prevention vaccine. We recommend this to all ladies and it can be given right from the age of nine years till the age of 45 years. In fact, in other countries, Western countries, 
HPV vaccine is part of the national immunization schedule for them. In our country, it is yet an optional vaccine, but it can be given right from the age of nine years. This vaccine is after the age of 15 has three doses. Before the age of 15, it has two doses. These three doses can be given over a period of six months. It has a schedule. Your doctor will tell you and call you for the vaccine as per the schedule required. So in six months time, the three vaccine doses can be given, which will prevent formation of cells into cancer cells of the cervix. And this again will prevent cancer of the cervix. It is effective as far as 95%. So you see that there is so So one must understand, now with Corona going on, all of us know that vaccine is The other infections which are caused by HPV can also be prevented like anal warts and cancers and penile cancers also. So now recommendation to give this to boys is also there. So please understand the importance of giving vaccines. Coming next is what is the WHO goal? The WHO goal is 90-70-90. That means 90% of girls should be vaccinated by the age of 15 years. 70% should be screened between the age of 35 to 45. And 90% of the women who have been identified with cervical cancer should be treated. I'll explain this again. To achieve this, why we are calling of 90-70-90 goal of WHO? This is so that by the year 2030, we finish off cancer, completely cancer of the cervix. So to eliminate cancer of the cervix by the year 2030, the strategy we have to follow is 90% go vaccinate go. That means less than 15 years girls, 90% in our country should get vaccinated with the HPV vaccine. 70% should be screened for cancer of the cervix. And 90%, that means, just just may positive aya hai, 90% should be treated. For precancerous lesions or early cancers. If we are able to achieve this goal of WHO, that is 90%, 70%, and 90%, then we not just by primary prevention and screening there are other things also which will help us to keep ourselves healthy so that these kind of problems do not come up that would be a healthy lifestyle eating healthy eating a lot of antioxidants exercising regularly and uh, forming a lifestyle which is a healthy lifestyle Corona has taught us a lot of things. And one of the things it has taught us is improve your body immunity. So immunity improvement is not just for COVID. It is also to prevent other cancers and other problems and other infections in your human body. So we have this time to say no to cancer, right? And we all should remember that we have to be safe and prevent ourselves from
women who are watching is that one second. So the message would be that all of us should take care of our health. All of us should be aware of certain problems which are there in women. And we should all be aware of the fact that there are methods to uh, control it. There are methods to prevent it. So a screening, detecting, and treatment policy, if we follow, we will be able to have a comprehensive approach towards cancer of the cervix and completely eliminate it as a public health problem. And the women of our society will be stronger, healthier, free from disease, free from cancer. And we must remember that all women in our world, they actually form the pivot of our families and our society. Thank you. If there are any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Yes, ma'am. We have a few questions. Yes. Uh, the first one we have one from uh, if, if somebody forgot previous injection of vaccine, is it important to repeat the whole schedule? See, it depends on when, how long back you forgot the vaccine. If it is a year back, you definitely have to repeat the whole schedule. If it is just a week or two, then you can still take the third or missed dose that you've taken. Uh, we have another question, ma'am. I have PCOS. What are the chances of getting this? PCOS does not predispose you to cancer of the cervix. As I have said that the predisposing risk factors would be where your body immunity is less, where there is smoking involved, where there is uh, multiple sexual partners involved, and the risk of HPV infection is more. PCOS per se does not predispose you to cancer of the cervix. We have one more question, ma'am. Uh, is cervical cancer is much related to breast cancer due to estrogen receptor receptive abnormalities? Uh, breast cancer, there are ER receptors are not seen in cancer of the cervix. These are very important in breast cancer, ER receptors. Uh, we have uh, one more question, ma'am. How, how to get rid of the stress mark after pregnancy? I mean... Stretch marks during pregnancy, yes, everybody develops stretch marks. And these stretch marks can be, your, while the process of pregnancy is going on, there are creams which are available to make the skin supple and soft. And there are anti-stretch mark creams also available. Post delivery, these creams can also be used. But what is going to help us is going to be the um, exercises and toning of the skin when recommended by your doctor. Uh, Ma'am, we have a question. Frequently, I have pain in my neck. Should I consult a general physician or a specialist? Pain in the neck? Yes. Uh, for pain in the neck, you definitely need to see a physician and an orthopedician. <laughs> uh, which vaccine is better, ma'am? That's another question we have. See, I... There are two vac vaccines available in the country. I am not here to propagate any vaccine. So I think you should go to your doctor, whatever your doctor prescribes you, that, that will be ideal. I cannot say this is better and this is bad. There is two vaccines which are available, which is Gardasil and Cervix. Two are there. They have different doses schedules. They have a different coverage of the vaccines. One is quadrivalent, the other is not. So just sure ma'am ma'am you can you hear me yes i can hear you okay ma'am yes. uh, i think you already spoke about uh, the simplified way about immunization i think you already spoke about Sorry? that during i your... can't hear you hi can you hear me ma'am now yes i can hear you okay so i think one more question we had about the immunization i think you already spoke about it and then we have a question again in one chat box. If I am suffering from endometrium hyperplasmia, then what are the chances of cervix cancer? Endometrial hyperplasia will predispose you more towards uh, endometrial cancer and not towards cervical cancer. Sure, ma'am. Uh, anyone, if anyone has any question, further question, they can unmute themselves and ask the question because 
Uh, one more question we have, ma'am. What is the nature of the cyst? How it, how it forms? Which cyst? Any specific cyst are you talking about? Uh, hi, Monica. Can you explain your question, please? Uh, hi. Uh, actually, cysts, like uh, earlier, I, uh, I was uh, afraid uh, I was having uh, this uh, ovarian cancer. So the uh, uterus has been removed. Now, again, uh, whenever I do these follow-ups, so uh, in ultrasound, it has been found there is one more cyst. So what is yes. the nature of cyst? It is not, uh, it is an eco cyst. I mean, uh, not yes. uh, a cancer cyst. So I want to know uh, how I can uh, be alert not to... Uh, 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 I want to know where is the cyst? Because if you it have... Is, had surgery, it is connected to the bladder. Connected to the bladder? Yes, yes. See, if um, ovarian cancer has been treated completely, follow-up is fine, yes, then yes. The, there will be no cyst in the ovaries because the ovaries are removed. Right. Yes, 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 yes. It is post-operative uh, as discussed with my doctor. He said that it is post-operative changes. It, this cyst has been uh, happened because of post-operative changes. Could be, but definitely uh, you should be on a follow-up with your doctor. Mm, if yes, he, yes. he or she advises you regular follow-ups for ultrasound, mm -hmm. then please do that. Don't neglect it. Okay, okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. We have one more question in the chat box, ma'am. One second. Uh, we really positive. What next, madam? Sorry? VI -I -L -I positive. What is next? Next, if VI -I, I is positive, then you definitely need to undergo a colposcopy and a cervical biopsy. Okay. Uh, do we have any more questions? I think uh, that this is what we have. If anyone has any questions, they can unmute themselves and ask. Ma'am, I Hello. think... Hello. Sorry? Ma'am, I think uh, we... Okay, different doses of different vaccines. That is... A, we'll take one last question and then we will uh, move on, ma'am. I think we are done with the questions. So, one last question we have. See, doses of the vaccines, they are all spread out over uh, six months. So one is 0, 1, 6 and the other is 0, 2, 6. So 0 and then 2 months and 6 months. That's why I'm saying like this, you can't take the vaccines by just telling my, me telling you the doses. It's all spread out over six months. It's better that your doctor writes it for you and prescribes it for you, right? Because if you try doing it on your own, you may go wrong, okay? But over, oh. in the span of six months, you'll be done with your vaccination. Ma'am, the last question that we have. Actually, before my uh, periods, my breast starts thickening. And after the periods, everything goes normal. Can you please uh, suggest something? Some form of regular physical activity is very important, which will reduce this kind of premenstrual bloating up of the breast and heaviness. And... Uh, uh, Exercises definitely help here, right? This uh, is something uh, very normal. Is it effective to get SPP vaccine at the age of 20 to 26, 25 to 26? Yes, why not? Of course, it, it is. Uh, for, uh, sorry, we have another question. We have for males to get rid of STD. Sorry? Is it effective to get SPP vaccine at the age of 25 to 26 for males to get rid of STDs? Males can also get this done, but ideally it is recommended in boys and uh, young boys, 14, 15 years old. And uh, to get rid of STDs completely, because STDs, one of the STDs is HPV, there are other STDs also which are there. So this is not a whole and sole treatment to get rid of STDs, right? Do we have any further question? Ma'am, thank you so much for your time. I think uh, it was a wonderful session. I think it will help all of us.
who have been here and we were live on facebook as well so it will help larger people uh, uh, across our network and of course whoever get to see this video thank you so much for your time ma'am thank you thank so much, you so much. if there are any further queries please feel free to send them to me i'll be happy to answer sure, them yes storm sure, i will do that for sure ma'am yes thank, thank you, you so for much. having me over and inviting me for the talk thank, thank you so much ma'am bye